In this episode, you'll learn about the three modes of control that influence behavior in a work environment, the role of management, and how to choose the most appropriate mode of control for a given situation. Our behavior in a work environment is controlled by three invisible and pervasive means. One, free market forces. Free market forces apply when actions are based on price, like when goods and services are exchanged between two entities who are seeking to enrich themselves. No one needs to oversee the transaction because everyone is openly serving their own self-interest. Free market forces fail when value isn't easily defined. Two, contractual obligations. When value is hard to define and free market forces fail, use contracts as the mode of control. A common example of this control are employment contracts, which define the kind of work you do and the standards that will govern it. Because it's hard to specify what people will do day to day, you'll need to have generalized authority to monitor, evaluate, and correct work where necessary. And three, cultural values. When the environment changes faster than rules can, or when circumstances are too ambiguous for contracts, use cultural values as the mode of control. The most important characteristic of this control is that the interests of the group must take precedence over the individual. For this to work, you must trust the people you work with and have a common set of values, objectives, and methods which can only be developed through shared experience. Modes of control govern what we do. From one day to the next, you'll find yourself influenced by all three. When you buy something, market forces are affecting you. When you go to work, you're adhering to contractual obligations. And when you do work outside your normal job description to help a colleague, that's cultural values. The role of management is to choose the most appropriate mode of control for a given situation. When free market forces work, you don't need management. In a contractual obligation, management's goal is to set and modify the rules, monitor adherence, and evaluate and improve performance. As for cultural values, management needs to develop and nurture a set of common values objectives, and methods that are essential for the existence of trust. One way to do this is by articulating the values, objectives, and methods. The other, more important way is by example. If your behavior at work is in line with the values you profess, you foster the development of culture. It's tempting to idolize cultural values as the best mode of control but it's not the most efficient mode of control under all conditions. What mode of control you use will depend on a person's motivation and the complexity, uncertainty, and ambiguity of their environment. For short, we'll call this the CUA factor. Let's construct a two by two matrix with individual motivation on the Y axis and the CUA factor on the X axis. Individual motivation can range from self-interest to group interest and the CUA factor can range from low to high. When self-interest is high and the CUA factor is low, free market forces are the most appropriate mode of control. As individual motivation moves toward group interest, contractual obligations become the most appropriate. If group interest and the CUA factor are high, then cultural values becomes the best choice. Finally, when self-interest and the CUA factor are high, no mode of control will work well. Let's apply this model to the work of a new employee. Their motivation is likely based on self-interest, so you need to give them a structured job with a low CUA factor. As they do well, they'll start to feel more at home and worry less about themselves and more about their team. They can then be promoted to a more complex, uncertain and ambiguous job, which also tends to pay more. As time passes and they gain an increasing amount of shared experience with other members of the team, they can then tackle more and more complex, ambiguous and uncertain tasks. This is why promotion from within tends to be preferred by companies with strong cultures. This is also why it's hard to bring in senior managers 
from outside the organization. Like any new hire, they come in with high self-interest, but likely inherit a job with a high CUA factor. All you can do is hope they quickly move from self-interest to group interest, and just as quickly get on top of their new role to lower the CUA factor.